The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Lord, be on my mind, be on my lips, and in my heart. Jesus told his disciples a parable. Can a blind person guide a blind person? Will not both fall into a pit? No disciple is superior to the teacher, but when fully trained, every disciple will be like his teacher. Why do you notice the splinter in your brother's eye, but do not perceive the wooden beam in your own? How can you say to your brother or sister, Brother, let me remove that splinter in your eye when you do not even notice the wooden beam in your own eye. You hypocrite, remove the wooden beam from your eye first. Then you will see clearly to remove the splinter in your brother's eye. A good tree does not bear rotten fruit, nor does a rotten tree bear good fruit. For every tree is known by its own fruit. People do not pick figs from thorn bushes, nor do they gather grapes from brambles. A good person out of the store of goodness in their heart produces good. But an evil person out of the store of evil produces evil. For from the fullness of the heart the mouth speaks. The Gospel of the Lord. We are still going through Luke's Sermon on the Plain, where he lays out the principles of his gospel, the coming of the kingdom, trying to transform the world or bring about the kingdom of God. And you may remember that last week I passionately spoke of how these principles of opposing evil, but without being evil, responding to sin without sinning, responding to hate without hating but loving, etc., the things Jesus taught us last week that seem very idealistic, can change the world and has changed the world through early time of Christianity, converted the Roman Empire, through the church, throughout the ages. We've done great things, not perfect, but it's possible. And also, it's possible to transform our families, our communities, our neighborhoods by the values of the gospel. Today, the passage continues, and it says, oh, by the way, before you go and change the world, let's look at ourselves first. Uh, forgive me for quoting one of my favorite uh, songs, but Michael Jackson, if you want to change, make the world a better place, start with the man in the mirror or the woman in the mirror. Jesus is warning us that the source and the element that's most important as we do good in the world is the quality of our character. And the scripture, second reading, says a profound thing. It says if we do work in the Lord, oh, it's bad down here, but if we do the work in the Lord, it will be fruitful. Romans 8.28 is one of my favorite passages. It says all, those, all things work for the good of those who love God. You see, as we go out into the world, we're going to try to make the world a better place or do good things. Sometimes we may succeed. Sometimes we may fail. But when we do it from a heart that has been transformed by Christ into Christ's likeness, it doesn't matter whether we succeed or fail. 
And sometimes in trial and tribulation and failure, people see a depth of a character or a source of your strength that's even beyond this world, and that can even be a bigger success or lesson than having your works succeed. And so Jesus is saying, let's first work on our own individual holiness. That is our Catholic vocation, a call to holiness for every baptized person. And Jesus is offering himself, like he did to those disciples, to be our mentor, to be our rabbi. And he does take time to teach those disciples so that after three years, they were not perfect, don't get me wrong, but over time, they become other Christs in the world. They imitate their master and become like Christ. One of the most popular books outside of the Bible is called The Imitation of Christ. I've recommended it to people, some like it, some don't. But the concept is biblical. St. Paul says that I die and Christ lives in me. Put on Christ. We're called to be icons of Christ in the world, going about and doing good. But even when our earthly works don't succeed, people can still see the Christ in us. And how does that happen? It's a spiritual growth that we all have to do. And the readings today are talking about our words and how our words can betray our heart. You've probably had this experience, so don't raise your hand, but have you ever been in a situation where you really did something or said something that you're just really embarrassed about and it was really ugly and you're ashamed to admit it? Those moments, as difficult as they are, really help us to see that there's still more work needing to be done. Christ wants to heal our heart. Christ is a rabbi. His disciples followed him, but they did more than simply listen to his teachings. They lived with him, and he transformed them over time. And he wants to do that to us. And so spiritual growth is an important part of our lives, and I'm sure we'll all agree in that. But we must make time for it and have a plan and work on it. Another, the word disciple is not only like a student, but it also refers to discipline. Only Christ can shape and heal our hearts to be more loving and our words there to be more life-giving but we must open ourselves to that. And so when we examine our conscience, when we recognize that there's things that are still yet that need to be healed or improved in my heart, it is important to apologize to others, to acknowledge them. But then I really like to continue to advise to just put them on the cross Make it a part of your prayer to stand in front of the cross, to take those ugly moments, those imperfections, those things that we might be ashamed of, and give them to Christ. And say, you purify them. You take them away from me. And over time, God not only instructs us, God transforms our heart by the Holy Spirit. And so we need to have spiritual lives that we regularly spend time with Christ in prayer, examining our life and laying our life out and allowing God to heal our heart. One of the analogies I use is prayer can be like open heart surgery. You know how when you go into the hospital, if you had heart surgery, they put you under anesthesia, then the doctor opens your heart and starts to fix it or help it. In prayer, it's like open heart surgery. The quiet the solitude is like the anesthesia. And then we open our heart to God who transforms it over time. God has also given us, God has given us the greatest gift, Jesus Christ. Truly human, a model for us to follow, but a model in which none of us will be able to follow 
unless we allow him to live in us. And so we must continue to allow him to live in us, to follow him, to learn about him in the scriptures, especially the gospels, and then to adore him in our heart, like in adoration. This Lent begins Ash Wednesday, as you know, and it's a time to work on our spiritual life. The disciples left everything and followed Jesus for three years, 24-7. We could spend a little bit more time every day to examine our conscience, lay our hearts open to God, read the Gospels, allow ourselves to get to know Jesus, to fall in love with Jesus, to allow his self to reveal his love to us and to lead us and guide us and mentor us, to make us more holy so that as we go out into the world, others see Christ in us.